Hey everybody, welcome back to Make It With Mod Podge. My name's Kathy Fillion, and today I have a really cool project to share with you. Some of you may be thinking about things that you can make to sell. Sell at bazaars, or at little craft fairs, or craft stores, or handmade stores, and I've got a whopper of an idea for you. These necklaces are so inexpensive to create. I'm going to show you how you can create these really cool wood pendants, and I'm using these faux Jenga game tiles from the dollar store. So with these wood tiles, you're gonna be able to create custom pendants. I'm gonna show you how you can do some rubber stamping with your Mod Podge. And then to give it that really cool glassy finish, we're gonna be using Dimensional Magic to top it all off. Now, by my calculations, each one of these necklaces is definitely less than a dollar to make. In the box of the wood game tiles, you get 72 pieces for $1.25. So that's less than two cents per wood piece. So every pendant, the, the base of it is gonna be less than two cents. For the necklaces, I'm using ball chain that comes in a bulk spool. And I'm, it also came with the connector pieces. And for that, you're roughing out about 40 cents per necklace, depending upon how short or long that you make these. For ball chain, I like to make it a little bit longer, then customers can always cut it a little bit shorter. So let's take a peek really quick at what I'm gonna show you. We're gonna make the smile one on camera today, but these are really fun. You can make sort of evergreen ones that work for any season. Down here, you'll see that I've got some Halloween ones. We are gonna be drilling these, but I'm gonna show you some other ideas on how you can attach clasps and things. And these are great for the holidays. So at less than a buck a piece, this is gonna be a really cool project, whether you're giving gifts and you need to make a whole bunch of them, like for teachers or something like that, or if you're making things to sell, you're gonna wanna check out this idea. So let's dive right in. I'm gonna be doing some drilling and we're gonna be mod podging and it's lots of fun and rubber stamping. Okay, so today we're going to do a side drill, just like so, and you can see our ball chain fits right through there. So I'm using 2.4 millimeter ball chain and I'm using a 3 8 inch drill bit. Okay, so you'll just wanna make sure when you get your ball chain, if you go with something a little bit bigger, you're gonna need a little bit bigger drill bit. But for this project, I'm doing 2.4 milliliters for a 1 8 drill bit. All right, let's show you how to side drill that, okay? This is the best way to do it if you don't want to add any additional jump rings or anything like that. And you're going to go in just a little bit from that edge and you're gonna go straight down. Now we are ready to do our Mod Podging. Okay, so now that I got it all drilled with our side drill, I wanna show you a couple other ways quickly that you can do this. If you don't have a drill or you don't feel comfortable drilling, you can easily glue a bale to the back of one of the pieces and that looks great and it's a really beautiful polished look. But again, that's gonna add a little bit more cost. Now, if you wanted to use a jump ring to be able to add a little bit of silver, or you wanna add some dangles or some little tassels or something, you could do a front drill and put a jump ring through there. So there is options with this, but the least expensive way to make this is doing that side drill. Now this wood paper or, or wood piece, I really wanted to keep that wood look. So I'm using some wood paper as my background that we're gonna stamp on. And I've just gone ahead and cut out a piece to size. It'll just fit right on top of my wood tile. And you can see over here that I've done just some solid prints. I'm gonna show you today how you can stamp on it. You can do colored papers like I have here. You just wanna find prints that have small prints, like these small snowflakes work great, or something like these holiday music notes work great, or a really tiny Swiss dot. So if you're gonna go with a pattern, go with a pattern that is pretty small if you're gonna be stamping over it. So we're gonna use Mod Podge Matte to attach our piece of paper to the faux game tile. So let's go ahead and just grab a little Mod Podge. 
We're going to apply that to the back of the paper. Position that on there just like so I like to press it with my finger and now we are ready to stamp out our design okay so we're gonna stamp out smile and I am using a permanent ink pad that's very important that you use a permanent ink pad so we're gonna go ahead tap on and stamp our first one down S Get our M down, M, I. And I kind of like it being a little bit crooked. You kind of want it, you know, that look of old metal stamping. Just like so. And now we are gonna let that dry for about an hour. And once that's dry, we're gonna top coat it. So now that my ink has been drying for about an hour, I'm gonna go ahead and seal it with a coat of the Mod Podge Matte. Just go ahead and do a nice even brush stroke going over it, just, oh, <laughs> just like so. And then you're gonna let that dry for about four hours. And I have one here that's been drying. This has been sealed and it's ready for the Dimensional Magic. So the Dimensional Magic is gonna give it that glossy, shiny, almost like a glass top finish and it's really easy to work with, but the big no-no is do not shake it. Don't shake it. You don't wanna create any air bubbles. And I like to have a toothpick on hand to pop any air bubbles. So you don't wanna shake it and you're gonna squeeze. You're gonna start at the very top. Let me grab my glasses, guys, so I can see what I'm doing. You're gonna start at the top. I like to get a little bit out, just kinda of charge it so you don't get an air bubble and work your way around the outer edge and then fill in the center. And it won't go over the edge. It'll just glide right to that end. I'm barely pushing on the bottle, just giving it a gentle squeeze. And it will just magically fill in like that. Now you're gonna set this aside and you're gonna let it dry for 24 hours before you mess with it. And if you get an air bubble, I don't see one today, but you would just go in and pop the air bubble. And I would like to say that sometimes the air bubbles come back or come out after about a half hour. So definitely give it a check in about a half hour. Other than that, it looks pretty good. We want it to dry in a non-drafty place and for 24 hours. Okay, let's talk about ball chain. I'm using a 2.4 millimeter ball chain, and you can do these as long, as short as you want. 30 inches is really nice if you want a long dangler. So let's go ahead and just measure some of that out. And this stuff easily cuts with just a little wire nipper, just like that. So simple, and we are gonna use the little piece that comes with it that's just the little clasp, traditional ball chain clasp. And with this, remember we use that 1 8 inch drill bit, then you'll just put your ball chain through there and thread that through. And go ahead and seal that up. Oh, sorry guys, I don't have my glasses. There we go, so simple. So let's. Go ahead and add it to our stash over here. You can do these with any different kind. You can do stamping, you can do papers like this. Again, if you're selling at a holiday boutique, look at these great kind of holiday themed ones. And of course, I had to get some Halloween in there. You can add beads to it. My suggestion is just make sure you the bead fits through your ball chain. You could add dangles, tassels, whatever you want. All right, there you have it. The most cost-effective craft bazaar project I could come up with. Now these wood game pieces are less than two cents a piece. So with a little paper and some of that permanent rubber stamping, you can create these really fun kind of faux metal stamped pieces. So cool and I love that dimensional magic and that glossy finish that it gives it. 
Hey, I'll be back here next week with another fun project to share with you. Make sure you use those hashtags PlaidCrafts and ModPodge so that everybody back at Plaid can see what you're making. Have a great week.